it is just me today and I have a friend of mine, Will Butler on, um, who you guys hopefully recognize the name. He is going to help us talk about money, uh, which is a super fun conversation for some of us and also a very scary conversation for, for some of us. So uh, Will, take a little bit of time for those of you uh, who haven't heard from him. I want to have him introduce himself and then we'll, we'll get going. Yeah, I think maybe, and every time I get a chance to introduce myself, I try to think of a unique way to do it. And so in this case, I think the reason that I like working and that I'm excited to be able to talk with Kevin today is, is mainly because the energy of the people in the uncl uncaged clinician groups matches that of, you know, somebody who's been, I would say, probably the most impactful individual in my life, which is my dad. And my dad was a small business owner who passed away unexpectedly. You know, and you get those man woulda, coulda, shoulda type moments like that you would have wanted to have with somebody who's who's passed. And then what I started to realize is that the best way that I can um, have conversations with them is to be able to communicate with people with similar energies. So uh, talking with people in the uncaged clinician community really selfishly gives me a lot of energy. Uh, and so I appreciate those opportunities. And as well, it's giving me the opportunity to pass along things that I know that my dad hadn't considered, whether um, through just uh, not, not having the opportunity through ignorance uh, or, or whatever, uh, distraction. And so I know that when David and I talked last time, oh, and I guess I should mention, um, I am classically trained as a physical therapist, I guess is how that could be phrased. Uh, and I got licensed and I now practice in financial services. And when I uh, initially got into financial services, I spent uh, the majority of my time working with students and uh, fresh professionals talking about how do I solve and navigate the iceberg of debt. But I would say, again, the things that give me energy the most are working with solopreneurs and just uh, small business owners, whether mobile or brick and mortar, uh, whether healthcare or not, uh, make better decisions and to help support them so that they don't have some of the shortcomings that my dad did. But um, I'd say that's me in a, in a few different nutshells and maybe a, a different approach. Awesome. So, I, uh, as, as we were talking before we hit record, um, I was trying to figure out how to start this, but I'm listening to the book. Uh, it's called Originals. I don't remember who it's by, um, but he, the author talks about how, like, we all have this dream. We all have the desire to be original, but how do we, how do we actually make that happen? How do we make our, our dreams a reality? And oftentimes in the entrepreneurial world we say you just have to jump and you have to like figure it out but I think one of the things that, that I learned from this book is that a lot of really successful entrepreneurs mitigate risk and they come about it from the perspective of I'm going to give myself the best opportunity for success and I think that's ultimately what what we were talking about before is what do we do to mitigate the risk of being an entrepreneur because we're all scared and how do we approach the financial situations that we're all in, in a way that gives us the best opportunity for success? Yeah. And I think that you nailed it. And like, you see so much on like social media, just as like chase your passion type of things, you know, shoot the shot. And, and, and yeah, that's true. And I think the most true principle in that is an initiation, a first step. I think that that's probably the most important takeaway. Um, but sometimes it's posed in a way that almost sounds like you're running blindly into the dark, like, we're sprinting into the dark, hoping we make it through. And I remember when I first got in to financial services, you know, still having that deep rooted clinical mindset. I was like, well, where's the primary literature on this stuff and small business ownership and da, 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 da. And one of the things I did stumble upon is that those, those who manage and like accept and measure out what the real risks they're taking in small business oftentimes have the most success because what they do is they build bridges and systems of mitigating the risk, you know. Um, sure, you might be able to jump, jump a gap that's three, four feet across, you know, and 50 feet down, but it's a lot smarter, you know, to lay a lay a ladder across it, you know, fashion a bridge, you know, put some safety ropes on it. Now, also, and maybe I'm thinking of all these outdoorsy things because, you know, I know you're somewhere where there's mountains and we don't have those in Ohio, but you know, the other type of thing that I think about is in outdoor pursuits. So many people are gearheads. And, you know, and they never actually take a, take a step down the trailhead. And so very similarly, we can spend so much time gathering information without taking action. 
but I really don't think it's a, it's a one or the other. I think it's an and approach. Like um, what's the goal? What's the, what's the business, but also what can I do to increase my likelihood of success and mitigating risk is definitely one of those, Kevin. 